Hello there. I'm going to try to document some of my uh, motor control progress that I've made with a Prius uh, transaxle. Uh, this is the first time that I've had, uh, there's two electric motors inside the transmission. This is the first time I've had both of the motors uh, spinning against each other, meaning one's creating forward torque, one's creating reverse torque. And it's allowed me to, to better understand uh, the behaviors of the motors. Um, the two motors I'm talking about underneath this table, I have uh, an older transaxle taken apart where there's the larger MG2 and then the smaller MG1. And then the test setup I have the full transmission, um, which has both halves already coupled together. And then there's a differential that hooks to the shafts uh, that go to each wheel, each front wheel. And then this other uh, housing here is where the gas engine would connect. Uh, the inverter on top. You have the motor, three phases of the motor. And you have three phases for the what's called the generator. Or the big one is MG2, which is the tractor drive, or MG1, which is the smaller uh, generator. I've got my battery cables coming in. I'm using a 75 volt um, power supply as my battery at the moment. I've got 12 volts uh, powering my control board, which consists of an Arduino Dewey underneath and a, a custom shield that I just made, which has on it some line drivers. And then um, the one I see is an eight channel analog digital and the other I see is a resolver to digital. The resolver is for absolute position of the rotor on the motor. You need to know that to be able to control it. The other I see's over here are for um, exciting and um, the resolver circuit. The resolver circuit comes into the motor and these six wires here. Two wires are for the excitation and the other for, for sine and cosine. It's like a rotating transformer. And then my digital and analog signals um, come into the inverter through this harness. So I'm, I'm measuring the B and C phase currents of each uh, motor generator. Um, I'm, I can see the uh, bus voltage. Now I showed the power supply was only 75 volts but I'm using a boost converter and a half bridge to take the bus voltage up to 200 volts in this experiment. So I'm gonna turn the motor on and then my scope probes are connected to the DAC outputs on my Arduino Dewey. So I'm doing a D to A uh, to represent the phase current, phase A current of motor one and phase A current of motor two. Because I want to compare, I'm trying to make them sign the soil using field oriented control. But I think due to non sign soil back EMF from the motor, it's not quite uh, working out that way. But, but it's kind of cool. I'll show you what I'm seeing. I have another scope probe that's going to show the RPM of the motors. And it's just, I have a digital output that toggles on the most significant bit of the absolute position of the rotor. So let's turn it on. This is my controller that allows me to throttle up. If I hit the on button, it boots it up to uh, 200 volts. And then I, I, have, I can have both motors running together. So I'm going to throttle it up with both motors um, spinning the... It, it quickly gets up to about 1600 RPM. That's 1200 RPM. So with both motors running against each other, I'm only getting about two amps through um, one motor and about one amp through the other. So the cyan line and the, and the um, yellow line are the motor one and motor two, but now I can switch. 
I can switch motor one into reverse. So if I just, what I did was I just said load, I'm loading motor two with motor one now. So the currents through the two motors, the cyan line and the yellow line are the two phase current, or phase A of their respective motors. So they're somewhat sinusoidal. The green is just the um, most significant bit of the resolver. So every half cycle it changes, every half electrical rotation. Um, and then my, my calculation or field already control is showing uh, about 8 amps through motor 1 and about 4 amps, 4 or 5 amps through motor 2. Um, the net is only 3 amps coming from the power supply. Because what's happening is the, the one motor is, is driving the generator, so the current is being recirculated back through the bus cap and it's not actually coming from the power supply or from the battery. So I would prefer to have my, my voltages or my currents a little more sinusoidal. But that's the way they are right now. And I think this is due to back EMF not being sinusoidal. I'm going to show you the back EMF in a minute. I'm going to turn motor one off. So you go over here, throttle down, and throttle down. And I'm going to turn off um, motor one completely. And I'm going to put a probe on the back EMF. So let's spin it up. So now the magenta line is on the uh, larger motor, and it's it's just the back EMF as we're spinning. So you can see the peaks. It's not quite sinusoidal. And I think that's what's causing my current to be uh, not quite sinusoidal. I'm trying to tune this loop. I'm not sure if this is the way. I only have a reference of one, really. Um, I'm assuming that this is just the normal back EMF for these motors. But it's kind of fun driving one motor against the other. It's kind of like a built-in dyno. I saw on uh, EBTV, he's got a test bench set up where he runs one motor against the other. It's a similar idea. Um, the next thing I'm going to show is how to charge the battery uh, using this Prius. I just wanted to get the, mo I was taking a fresh look at the motor control, but in my car I have the um, this planetary gear that's inside here that connects the two motors. I have it welded together, and that's why I went to um, I'm going, to run both, I'm going to run both motors in the same direction to drive the uh, electric car. I'm just running them against each other right now uh, for debug or for optimization and tuning. Um, that's all I got for now. Thank you.